Hello! I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna kinda lean over like this so I can be in frame. Um, I have not recorded anything for quite a while, and the last video I recorded was not very good quality, and I apologize for that. Um, but it took me like two hours to get my hair into that weird Princess Leia thing, and, uh, by the time I'd actually rewatched the video to see how it looked, I'd taken my hair down, and I didn't want to spend two more hours putting my hair up into the thing, so I just said, you know what, I'm gonna upload this one. Um, but I got, speaking of hair, I got a comment asking me for a tutorial on how I usually do my hair with the curl up like that, and the, and like that. So I'm gonna go over that right now. Um, but first a little bit of background. In the 1880s, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to put some pictures up on the screen. Um, in the 1880s, the style was to have weird kind of frizzy bangs along up here, and then a bun sort of here at the crown of the head. And that continued on into the 90s. And in the late 90s, women started setting their hair up into a more puffy style that would turn into the um, Gibson girl pompadours. The, you know, the really high, maybe I could do a tutorial for one of those sometimes, sometime, but the really high um, pompadours that uh, came about in the early 1900s. So my uh, normal hairstyle is based off of the um, sort of mid to late 90s, so when the frizzy bangs are going out and the more puffy style was coming in, but it hadn't become an actual pompadour yet. So, uh, the first thing to do is to brush your hair. I'm going to be using this piece of a hairbrush. Um, it used to have a handle, but my mother uh, <laughs> was brushing her hair and it broke off and I've not had time to replace it yet. Um, so the first thing to do is to brush it. I part my hair off to the side a little bit because I, first of all, I have a widow's peak here. So I, it's awkward to part my hair in the center. And I also have a cowlick here and here, so it, my hair really does not like to be parted in the center. So um, I have it parted off to the side. And I'm sorry I'm kind of leaning over like this. The iPad is propped up on my headboard, the headboard of my bed. So I can't remember. <laughs> it's the only place I can have it. Um, so I'm just going to have to lean over a little bit. Um, so, first thing to do is give your hair a good brushing. I am also sorry, I thought I'd be able to film more videos over the summer, but apparently interning for the EPA doesn't leave you a lot of free time. Who would have thunk? Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm quite quite busy. Um, so that's with the normal brush, and then I like to take this uh, antique boar bristle brush and just go over my hair a few times with this. Just kind of makes everything smoother and more puffy, um, which helps for the hairstyle. Another thing I should add is that I wash my, I wash my hair once a week. And it sounds disgusting, but it isn't. Uh, I, pro I propose that it isn't. Um, your hair gets used to being washed whenever you wash it. So if you wash your hair every day, your hair is going to become accustomed to that and produce a lot of oils very quickly because it's used to having those oils taken away. If you wash your hair once a week, your hair will become accustomed to that and it will produce oils much less quickly. Um, in the 1800s, hair was washed, um, there are some manuals that say it shouldn't be washed more than once a month. Uh, I think that's going a little bit far, um, but people generally tended to wash their hair about once a week. So, uh, I wash my hair once a week, and I also use historically accurate soaps. I use a bar of Kirk's Castile soap. Um, there are several manuals, I'm afraid I can't remember what they were, or else I would link to them. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it. There are, were several manuals that recommend use, recommended using Kirk's Castile soap on your hair. And if you want to wear your hair down, then Kirk's Castile soap is not 
the best thing to do because it does leave your hair kind of like coarse and straw like almost um, and it doesn't it does not very flattering to have it down if you're wearing your hair up it's wonderful because it gives your hair a lot more texture and volume modern shampoos and conditioners tend to leave the hair kind of slippery um, so Kirk's Castile soap really really does work for giving your hair enough texture to put it up so the next thing to do is to sort out your hairpins I love these hairpins that I oopsies I'll put it there um, I use these to um, put my hair up in a bun at the back of my head uh, they are antique they date from around 1900 and they're unusually large for for hairpins of the time they're about two inches long um, so I, I don't know where you can get them I found these at an antique store if you can come across anything like this I, I love them um, but any normal hairpins will work just as well I've also got these ones which are smaller you can see the comparison um, but these ones work just as well I've got kind of thick unruly hair um, so the bigger ones work better this is another example these ones are much finer oops um, but yeah any kind of hairpin that you want to put your hair to um, put your hair in a bun any kind that works for you will be fine and then you'll also need bobby pins to do the front so I just use these and I like to have four for this side and three for this side um, just so I can be extra sure of security this side has more hair in it than this side so that's why I do four um, so I'm just going to get bobby pins there it is go. Oh. Not, used to ha not used to having my hair down for such a long time. Okay, so there's a mirror on the wall over there and I might have to go back to that occasionally, but I'm going to try to work with just this. So you're going to want to take your finger like this from Put your thumb just in front of your ear and drag it up and get this hair here and then seems like a bit much so i'm going to take this part out so then you've got this i'm going to put this part aside for later you've got this and i would recommend brushing it just like that and then you're going to put one or two twists into it, not, don't twist it incredibly, and then just arrange it here so it looks nice. That looks fine. And then take a hairpin, or a bobby pin, excuse me, and put it right here where your finger is. Then just use the other three to sort of hold this bobby pin down. Looks all right. Yeah, and if you need to, you can kind of. Sometimes I'll like hold the bobby pins down here, and then I'll pull here to just adjust the shape a little bit. So when that's how you like it, just go to the other side. Same thing. I also love this hairstyle because the uh, 
hair right around here <laughs> is actually a bit shorter than the rest of my hair and that comes from eighth grade when I was looking at a lot of portraits of Elizabeth I of England and I decided, you know what, I want to have hair like that so I impetuously took a razor and just kind of shaved this part of my forehead. Um, so I'm, I'm still actually recovering from that a little bit even though it was about seven years ago. Um, but this, this hairstyle so when I pull my hair back into a bun, this hair will kind of come out of the bun, but when I have it like this, pinned right here, it won't fall out. Hmm. Sorry, there was a clank from outside. Alright, so that's the front. And then there, there are times when I just leave it like this for a more casual um, summer, summery thing. Sometimes I'll just leave my hair just like this, but I really don't like having my hair down. It's, it's, it annoys me. So, uh, next step is, uh, to gather this all up and then be sure you hold it right here. If you're not holding this tightly and then you brush here, it will just kind of pull out of its, um, arranging here. So hold it here so it's nice and smooth. Remember to keep my head back. I'm used to tilting my head forward when I do this. Okay. Uh, not bad. There. And then you're gonna make the bun. So I always start twisting downwards because if you twist it upwards, then this part of your hair here will poof up. So I twist. downwards then bring it up and just wrap it around itself I'm sure you all know how to do a bun there then you're going to go in with the pins, and I like to put them in and go directly straight towards my head, then turn them sideways and push them up. That way it will grab the hair sitting on some of the pins. I want them to fall on the floor. And I like to use a lot of them because I don't want to have to redo my hair halfway through the day. I like it to stay up all day. And this is a hairstyle that will stay all day. And then if there's anywhere where it feels like, I don't think I have anything right here that feels kind of loose. And I also like to have my hand on the other side. So if I'm putting a pin in right here, I like to have my hand right here so I can feel if it goes too far and starts to poke out at the other end. Ow! And there are times <laughs> when you will end up poking yourself on the scalp and you'll need to try again. <laughs> I believe that should do it. Um, oh. And that's as far as I can go, so I'm gonna have to turn back this way. Alright, so 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it educational. I hope it wasn't very painful for you. Um, I am going to try to upload more frequently, but I'm not going to promise anything because if I don't promise anything, then I can't break any promises. And that was very inelegantly put. You know, I think I'm just going to go sleep now. Um, so I hope you guys have been having a good summer, and I will hope to see you again soon. Bye!